Five scariest things in a Mexican prison that I got to see. I wish I could say that they were funny, like the US ones, but they weren't. They were actually pretty fucking serious and pretty messed up. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, Suvanza la Suburban. Let's get this video on the road. Hey guys, what's up? So as you guys know, yesterday was my five craziest things that I saw in the U.S. prison. Well, today is the five craziest things I've seen in the Mexican prison, but they're not funny like the ones in the U.S. They were actually pretty messed up and it is a whole different world over there with you know the cartels the mafia you know whatever you want to call those organizations i mean i look at them as high power gangs you know organizations that are just ruthless and i mean it was intense man intense i always tell people once i did time in the mexican prison once i got to the united states you know, they were somewhat of a five-star hotel. You know, there is some really, really like crazy, scary places here in, in, in the U.S. Like Victorville, Bloody Beaumont. Uh, there's, there's a lot of prisons that are USPs, that are max, high-level security prisons that are, are pretty intense. But when I say about the whole five-star thing, what I mean by that is like, the food, the clothing, the rooms, the beds. That's what I mean about that. It doesn't mean that it's more violent, but it is more violent. <laughs> and that's how we're gonna get into the number one craziest thing that I see in the Mexican prison. So what's crazy in Mexico is that the cartels have a lot of control over power inside the prisons. So there's guns in there there's machetes there's pipes there's every kind of weapon you could possibly think of you don't need to make a shank like in an american prison to try and steal you know metal off the bench in the yard you don't need to do none of that stuff because they have every weapon you could possibly think of from a bat to a pipe to a gun and they're all in there that's how they keep control inside and you know there was some pretty scary riots that happened and it's crazy because you see these things and you think that because you're in prison you should be a little bit safer but no al contrario <laughs> number two craziest shit i ever seen in there you know it's crazy because people used to come from the outside from the world, the free world, into the prison on visiting days. Visiting days at that prison were on Thursdays and Sundays from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And people would come from outside in there to party because the drugs were cleaner, purer, everything. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of coca lavada. That means it's pretty much pure. It has no cut no like no nasty stuff and they had that a lot there and they had it like in flavors you know strawberry it, it was it was crazy and and one of the craziest things that i've seen in there is that i walked into a cell once of one of the big guys there and the room was like filled you know there was a couple of, of, of bricks in there i want to say about six keys and two bundles of weed and they were open for business 24 7. 24 7 you know when I was in there and I would uh, be getting high and I would run out of like liquor or, or coke and my unit 
didn't have it no more. I would come downstairs to the to the rail, knock, and the guard would come, and I would be like, hey, I'm gonna go over there to go buy, I'm going to unit eight to go buy, you know, this and this and that. And they would let me out and I would go over there because the guards are taken care of. So tell me that's not like pretty crazy. Yeah. Number three. And I think I think maybe this should have been number one, but there was an individual that came out in the newspaper a day before. And this individual had raped a a baby girl. Uh you know, yeah, all bad. Um he came out in the newspaper so as soon as they let him in through the big gate door, because in Mexico they don't separate uh, sex offenders from population. The only ones they do separate and they try to separate are like policemen. And I think it's just because of the guards doing them a favor. They had a unit in the back by medical where they would put police officers. But a sex offender, they would release them and just throw them in. And that day when that guy came in, they had already started beating him with pipes since like the beginning of, of the door when he came in. By the time he got through the unit, I wanna say about, it's a pretty big unit, so it's a pretty big walk. By the time he got to the middle part of the prison, he was on the floor trying to put his hands down to like support himself but he couldn't because all the bones on his hands were broken. So it was just kind of like jiggling around. Then when I turned to look over, they had actually put a broom up his ass all the way where just the part that, you know, sweeps. It's those big Mexican brooms that sweeps was the only part sticking out. So it looked... It looked like a fucking cartoon, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it looked fucking crazy. Like, I had to take, like, a couple of, like, retakes because, like, it just didn't, it seemed unreal. And that shit looked fucking crazy. I mean, this dude, yeah. Let's just say he didn't make it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, crazy shit. I have to say, man, that some of, like, the most violent and crazy shit uh, I, I saw in the Mexican prisons because they're, I mean, they were just fucking crazy, like fucking just, I don't know how to even explain it. Like there was this one time me and my boy Ricardo, we were in the uh, two unit where there's a lot of like local gang members from that city and they got into it with the Maicerones, like the big dudes that have the money and all that shit. And they came out with like bats and pipes and they were just knocking them on their heads where you could just like hear it. And they were just like going to sleep on the floor, just falling. And we were just up there looking and it was like bodies all over the fucking floor. It was, it was, it was fucking crazy, you know, and I seen some of the most violent shit over there, and it would be like over soccer games, it would be over, you know, drug debts, uh, I mean, you name it. I mean, I've told you guys in the past, like, respect was really big on visiting days, and if you looked at anybody's daughter or wife or anything, oh, trust me, after visitation was gone, after everybody was gone, oh, they're coming to get you, and... You know, I, like I said in the past, I'm going to share a little bit more of my stories Why I when I was out there. You know, there was a couple of times I almost lost my life when I was over there. And it was intense, man. It was intense. And I, I realized why most of those Americans on that plane, when they transferred us, why they were so mentally, like, fucked up because of the shit that you see. And people don't understand that that that's what causes PTSD, is when you see dramatic events take place. It, it could be anything, a car crash, somebody chopping their heads off. It, it, it could be anything like that. And throughout the years of, of seeing that shit, it takes a toll on you and it fucks you up mentally. There was a big riot that kicked out in the, in the Mexican prison where I was at. 
and it was because of the drugs. They were having a little war between the guys that were distributing the drugs. It was two main guys that had control of, over it. And one was a local, one was an outsider. But the outsider had a little bit more power and money than the local guy. But they were going at it, so the local guy made it to where it's, he stopped the guards bringing it in because that's how the, guy got, the other guy got it in. So he stopped, stopped it, boom. So we went, I think about, I want to say about six days with like no drugs in the prison, no weed, no pills, no cocaine, no like nothing. There was only liquor. And the prison started going fucking crazy. So they started burning mattresses. They started fucking just rioting like crazy. And this is what's crazy is that we actually seen the CEOs, the guards, the Mexican guards run in with the drugs in their hands and drop them off at both, both units, like running in with their hands. I'm talking about a, a brick of weed on one hand, a brick of coke on the other one, running in to drop them off to both guys. If that shit ain't crazy, I don't know what the fuck is crazy. I forgot about this one. So I guess this will be number six. So I'm giving you a bonus. But there's a lot of crazy shit that fucking happened over there, man. And, you know, I'm just glad I made it out. Because, man, I was happy when the American Council came and got me. There was this new kid. He came in on a murder case where he was really, really young. He was like... 17 I think and he was sleeping with this older lady that kind of I guess she convinced him to kill her husband so he ended up killing her husband they both got caught and they were both sent to prison so as I told you guys in the past the the girl prison is in the middle of the men's prison and they're they're allowed to come out and have conjugal visits with their partners or if they meet somebody there they put in the paperwork and they're allowed to come out and have conjugal visits with an, in an inmate or somebody that's coming on visit well what happened was they went in there they had a first visit together and this fucking this this lady was like a conniving backstabbing ass lady like she was just using that that kid she actually started dating one of the big drug dealers in the prison because obviously you know he had money he had a lot more to offer her than that fucking kid the kid was pretty much broke he didn't have shit so she started dating that guy and you know that you would see him together and the kid would just be like depressed and like you would see him walking around and he looked really bad well one day I guess one guy in another unit gave him a bunch of pills he passed out and he raped them so the whole prison you see in mexico even though it was like really like savage like crazy where there was like a lot of stabbings a lot of fights you know people getting hit in the head like it just it was really really violent really bad there was a lot of code and respect for shit like that like you know, crimes on women, crimes on kids, uh, rape on somebody. Like, it was a lot, a lot of code on that. And the whole prison pretty much just beat the blocks out that dude for doing that to that kid. And he was, he had to get taken to the hospital where he had every bone in his body just broken. It was really, really, really bad. And I hate to say that after that, that, that kid, man, he was... I used to feel really, really bad for him when I used to see him because I knew that he, mentally he, he was already like gone. And after that, he actually moved in with one of the um, uh, gay inmates and uh, was, I guess, his partner. But I know I had a lot to do with the case, uh, just everything, you know, mentally took a toll on him being raped, get, you know, that girl leaving him everything and he was just a mess man there was a lot of bad shit over there in mexico man and you know my respects to all my people out there you know i've told people that i'm where my family's from and everything and you know prison is not not a good place whether it's here there it doesn't matter you know uh siendo jaula de oro is still a fucking jaula you know it's still a fucking cage even if it's made out of gold and 
there is there's some really bad places over there and there's some really bad people in prison and there's some really sick individuals that need help and some should stay there and some should not be let out and it is what it is man you know all i can tell you guys is stay the fuck out of prison stay the fuck off of drugs stay the fuck off the streets don't get into that lifestyle because it only ends up in two places either dead or in prison and that's what it is those are the scariest moments that i had in prison in mexico and i think that doesn't even come close but i can't give it all to you guys at one time my name's jc i am wrong the strong hey guys don't judge nobody give somebody a hug live savage and remember live easy life could be hard but if you live hard life could be really easy i'll check you guys on the rebound